Hi, <clears throat> D Baca Maker here. In a previous video, I showed you how I created this sort of ad hoc party break, party cutoff tool out of some steel that I had lying around. And I still need to make more tools for this anvil. And one of the things that I had been wanting to get into, of course, was uh, bending, uh, primarily S hooks, or just hooks on the end of anything to begin with. And I was not all that confident in my skill to do it freehand. So uh, I decided that I was going to build a multi-part bending jig. And this video is about how I did that. The starting material for this project is an inch and a half by three quarter inch piece of steel, just like I used for the cutoff tool. So I'm using the anvil to set the length of the offset and here I'm just marking that offset so that I can later on get to hammering. Once I get the metal up to temperature, I start working it. And this metal doesn't look that hot because of the daylight, but it was in fact so hot that the plastic handle of my hammer there started to burn. So I eventually had to switch over to a wood-handled sledge. This is a four-pound uh, sledge. Just to uh, get the metal to move. I'm knocking it down and upsetting it to increase the width. The hole in my anvil is roughly one inch. So by, by drawing out this offset, I also thickened the offset so that it would fit into the hole. And there I am just testing it and testing it until it's all done. My hand was getting really sore and my arm really tired by this time because this is an hour's worth of forging and I wasn't going to take it all the way down because there was a lot of scale a lot of ridges so I decided later that I would just grind off the excess and here I am putting a bend into this bar so that it would stretch out over my anvil Here I'm doing a little planishing to take down some of the rough edges and then testing to see if it actually made the angle. And it fits. Now to cut it off and start grinding it smooth. This is actually an 80 grit flap disc that I'm using. Now I'm cutting off a piece of bar stock, two pieces one one and a half inches long and one two inches long and welding them onto a piece of steel that I had lying around. Lots of this is stuff that I have lying around. I would have made it on, uh, out of a wider plate and in the future I will make it out of a wider plate but for now it does the job. Then I welded on a piece of quarter inch on the side and two pieces of quarter inch round stock on the bottom so that it fits into the hole. That'll be detailed later in the video. Oh, and I had to make a bench for an upcoming show. Now I'm using a piece of 3 8 square stock to test out the bending jig. Here I'm cutting it off. And as I say later in the video, I might have made this segment 
way too long. So the next time I try it, I'll make it with a smaller piece. And now I start tapering and drawing out the ends of this bar to make scrolls. And I switched here to my three and a half pound hammer because its face is more rounded than my three pound hammer. And that helped draw the metal out faster. Now I flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. I don't set the scrolls yet because I have to do something to this bar first. And that something is putting a twist in the bar. Here I have a crescent wrench and a bending wrench that I made up real quick a long time ago for a different project. And I didn't organize this properly. I forgot about the handle to the vise, so I switched the positions of the elements. I put the bending bar into the vise and used my crescent wrench on the end. And that did a lot better job of twisting this bar. It's a simple twist. So, hey, <laughs> blacksmith challenge, Black Bear Forge. Um, but I've already done this in the past. And as I point out later on in my commentary, this probably could have been a lot more twisted but I liked the look of the helix here, so I left it as is. And here I am putting the final scroll on the bar. I've already set the other scroll. It is now facing up relative to my position, and I'm turning this scroll down relative to my position to make the scrolls opposing when I twist the bar. Twist the bar, bend the bar. And here I'm putting the final scroll into this bar. I've set them opposing, as I mentioned earlier, so that when I bend the bar around the jig, they create outward facing scrolls. And now we get to the bending part. bending went pretty easy, although I started it off at the wrong position. I should have started it off higher on that first 
bit of round bar so that it would have gone more easily over the lower piece and then I could have slid the whole thing down. But it still worked as I had intended it. From there it was just refining the profile so that it's nice and square and then brushing it to get off the scale that I had left on it in the previous heatings. And there off to your right is a little metal bowl with a magnetic base and that's filled with canola oil and that is what I'm going to use to finish the S-hook with. And here is the closest thing I can get to a beauty shot. Enjoy! Let me get down there Daniel Moss style, ha! <laughs> Alright, well that was a major success. Uh, <laughs> this is my first S hook ever. It's not my first twist, it's not my first scroll, but it is my first S-hook. Uh, a little bit uneven there. I probably could do with a lot more twisting in the middle to shorten it up. Um, these are uh, about inch and a quarter. Yeah, ow, they're still hot. Uh, I thought they'd be cooled off by now. <laughs> These are, uh, and I'll get the metric for this later, but yeah, these are exactly an inch and a quarter diameter steel rod. I honestly think, I thought that these were high carbon steel before, but when we were cutting it, I noticed that there was absolutely no star, star sparkle effect. It was all just straight and boring uh, sparks. So this is low carbon steel, which is just fine for what I'm doing. And um, it's entirely likely, just because of how I made this, that because um, I started off with nine inches of material and then drew it out to make the uh, scrolls. And it's entirely possible I could have done gotten away with a lot less. I could have done an eight inch uh, or even a seven inch if I was going to uh, uh, make a thinner hook. Uh, this is uh, 3 8 material. Again, I'll give you the metric when I'm done with uh, when I edit the video. And uh, I made this so that the top would be higher than the bottom so that I could fit this in like so, catch it on the quarter inch rod that I have there so that I could bring it all the way around and then drop it down so that I could bring it back around. I'm going to guess that that is the standard for this kind of jig. I said because it, it only makes sense. Uh, I've never seen a jig quite like this that separates from, oh, it's still hot, uh, separates from this thing, which is going to become a um, bolster plate, different sizes, so that when I finally get to start punching things, I'll have something to sit it on, as well as a, a short ribbon header. And uh, that just fits down inside there. And this, hot as it is, still hot, hot. Hey, how about this? Chill for a minute. If you're covered in oil, it's not going to hurt you. Alright. The uh, pegs down here are three inches across, center on center, same thing with these, center on center. These are 
these are quarter inch material, but the holes are one thirty one sixty fourth larger than a quarter of an inch, so that it slides down easy. I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm looking forward to the using this monkey tool at some point. This is also um, 1 64th larger than a quarter of an inch. So again, I could take quarter inch stock in there, shoulder it up, or even um, uh, rivet head it if I want to. But this is meant for shoulders. This is meant for te round tenons. Ah. Oh. Well, that's it for now. Um, I just wanted to, I was really anxious to get this going. I had to make the bench that you saw in the middle of the video for upcoming production, but I really wanted to try to get this going as quickly as possible. And I'm very happy with it. It looks like the letter S. Uh, and I'm looking forward to hanging it on something at some point. So that's all for now. You know what to do after this. Thanks for watching.